Hi everybody, Zari Ballard here. Welcome back to my channel. Have I got something for you today? Look, try to stick around to the very end. I'm going to talk about something called aphantasia, which I bet you haven't heard about. I hadn't heard about it either. It's like a brand new phenomena, neurological disorder that they're all discussing, and I am going to relate it to narcissism. So stick around to the end because you're going to understand. It's going to help you figure some things out. And maybe we can figure some things out together. So you're not going to want to miss it. So don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. everybody welcome back to my channel uh, this is the when love is a lie video blog podcast and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and hit that like button so it can show up in and make sure you hit the bell so it can show up in your feed and you can make sure you get notified every time I come up with a new video I'm just gonna get right into it have you ever heard of aphantasia let me tell you I was just watching YouTube videos. I was lying in bed watching YouTube videos and this came across. It just popped up and man, oh man, I sat straight up. Let me do a disclaimer right off the bat. I'm in no way making an excuse for narcissism or anything of the sort. But day after day, people ask me, why do they do it? How can they do it? And I and here's my and here's my answer to that, okay. Without knowing anything about what I'm going to tell you in a second, okay. This is what I say. Number one, they can do it because they they have an inability to attach to certain things, to anything. The inability to attach meaning to certain things, to relationships. Therefore, they can just give you a kiss goodbye and then turn away and basically out of sight, out of mind. Now keep that, keep that in your head, out of sight, out of mind. And then they disappear and you wonder how can they do that? And one of the things that used to be really bizarre to me is that I would get the silent treatment for months, okay, months. And then somehow I would end up pulling up to my ex at a red light, say, okay? And it would be like, beep, beep. You know, he would do it and look at me, hey! And next thing you know, we'd be back together. As if none of that ever happened. And this, this all relates to the reset button. Wow. Okay. So, I'm watching a YouTube video. And it came up and it says, Aphantasia is the name of the... Uh, I'm going to put the link to the video down below. Let me read to you what it is, what aphantasia is, okay? I'm going to read to you a few examples of how they define it. So the first one is aphantasia. This is from Merriam-Webster, okay? When your mind eye fails you, aphantasia describes a phenomenon neuroscientists have only been studying for a few years, okay, so it's very new. The inability to see images in your mind, okay? This is crazy shit. The, and here's another definition. The inability to form mental images of real or imaginary people, places, or things. And here's another definition. If your mind's eye is blind, okay, and let me try to let me try to break it down in layman's terms. I don't know about you, but if there's some memories that I have that I can I hear music or something or something triggers that memory and I am right back there. I mean, I can visualize everything. I can like sit and daydream. I I can think about that moment and it makes me feel good. Okay? I, if you can do that, okay, that's normal. But somebody who has aphantasia can't do that. Now, the video that you're going to, this down, please watch it, okay? It's, it'll be in the, the link will be in the description. 
the people that were in the video, there's one particular was a guy. He was the main focus of the video. And his deal was this. And you're going to see where I'm going with this. His deal was his mother died. And he was very close to his mother. Very close to his mother. But when she died, he got over like that. Like, he, it was no big deal. Like, he just... And he knew that was odd. His family thought it was odd. And what his, his problem is, is that when he is not with somebody, he can't think about them. Like, it doesn't register. There was a, in the, in the video, towards the end, he was looking at photographs of his mom, and you could tell that it was making him emotional. Okay, he was smiling and looking at it. But you put those photographs away, and you talk about his mom, like, tomorrow or the next day, and he's not going to have very much emotion about it. How does this relate to narcissism? I think it relates a lot to narcissism. And again, I'm not saying that anybody in this video that had aphantasia, anybody in that video is a narcissist, because they certainly, certainly didn't seem like it. For the simple reason is they are concerned about their disorder. They're concerned about the fact that they really can't feel. One girl was saying that she can get over breakups and suck it. In the video, nobody, I oh know, <laughs> I searched and I can't connect it to narcissism online. And, and it's, a new, it's a new phenomenon. Some people call it a mental disorder. I'm not sure how, what it, in the end, what it's really going to be called. But I'm telling you, it, it would make sense that narcissism has something to do with that. And, and maybe the difference is that people who have aphantasia and don't give a shit about it, maybe that's the narcissist. There has to be something that's missing. This is this is what, and we, you know, we, we chalk it up to, oh, they're just plain fucking evil, which, yeah, maybe they are. I'm sure they are, okay? But maybe it's something else. Maybe they can't. And, and I, I have tried to describe this to people in almost those same words that out of sight, out of mind, when they leave, they don't, we linger on, on memories. When we are in love with someone when, and if we have good times or whatever and they leave, we can, we can live on those memories. We can linger on those particular memories and they keep the relationship nurtured for us. We can just can't wait to the next time we see them and we miss them and, and we're excited to see them. Um, we can't believe, you know, and then when they blow us off, we're just like devastated. How can you do something like that? This, nars, I always said nars, nar, narcissists don't feel that way. They can't, they can't, they can't attach to anything. And that would explain why sometimes me and the narc would be broken up until we ran into each other. And then we'd be back together. Just like that. As if it never happened. And and my and I'd be like, where you been? What have you been doing? And he'd be like, well, I'm here now, aren't I? I mean, that was his only explanation. I don't know. It's <laughs> It's pretty crazy. This is an actual neurological problem. Now, some of the people were saying that actually it's not really a bad thing because people who have aphantasia, they don't, they tend not to get, a, they don't get emotional. They don't, um, they don't worry about the past and they don't worry about the future because they can't visualize it. Literally, the mind is a is dark. It's a blank. Okay. It says, here's one. Uh, aphantasia, the condition that darkens the mind's eye. Let me just read this for a second. Okay. Yeah. Escapism. Now listen to this. Escapism is one of the imagination's great joys. We can embark on vacations weeks in advance. 
Okay, enjoy a sunny beach in our heads while we're at our desks. Get ready for our vacation. Look excited, you know, get excited. We can relive a cherished memory with a favorite relative in an instant. Okay. And this is called our mind's eye. A person with aphantasia doesn't have a mind's eye. They can't sit and think of you and miss you in the way that we can. The, they can miss the concept of you, perhaps, but they can't, they don't sit and think about things like we do. They, and, and actually, it, it is kind, if you were to look at it as a, as something positive, they stay present in the present moment all the time. They're always in the present moment. Such escapism is not possible for people with the rare and only recently identified condition called aphantasia. People with aphantasia cannot conjure mental images, original or from memory. Instead, their mind's eye produce dark, blank canvases that cannot be painted on. This is, this is incredible to me. This would explain why you can sit with a narcissist and make all kinds of plans for a vacation. They can be excited about it in the moment. You can be looking on things and booking tickets, and then it never happens. I'm telling you, there is something going on here. There's something going on here. And, and this is so new. It's so new. They're just now studying it that they haven't even begun to kind of attach it to that. But I, I really want you to think about it. Again, not that I'm giving narcs any pass whatsoever but if we're trying to figure out just racking our brains how they can be so indifferent to a history we've been with them together 12 years how can they possibly just blow that off because they don't think about it when they're with you they think about it but oh my god okay let me you know what i'm going to search i'm going to search aphantasia and relationships watch this Oh my God. Okay. I do not, why am I not seeing the word narcissist in here? I can't. I mean, like, why isn't it even, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm not seeing these people are narcissists. I'm just saying, but somebody besides me has to go, but kind of, it's kind of like, okay. Okay, this is a guy with aphantasia and they call talking, okay? Aphantasia affects my breakups, which in turn affect my relationships. Breakups are easy for me because if thinking about somebody makes me sad, I can just choose not to think about them at all. I'm inconsolable for a couple of days, then I get distracted by life again, and I don't even think about it. Wow. Okay. And they say about one in 50 people have it. One in 50 people. When your visual cortex doesn't work properly. And these people, they realize that they're like that. Like, see, that's the difference to me between a narcissist who realizes they're like that and doesn't give a flying fuck, okay? Or or somebody who has this aphantasia and just suddenly realizes that his mother died and he just really doesn't care. The doctor in the video asked, asked the guy, when I ask you to visualize an apple, can you do it? The skin and all that. And he said, no, he can't. He can't visualize an apple. And the doctor, you know, if I put an apple in front of you, then you go, oh, that's an apple. Okay, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, this is what's going on. This, and it's weird too, because this is the way that I've been explaining it. This is why it freaks me out so much, because this is the way that I've been explaining it to people. Why narcs do what they do. You know, it's two basic things. Their inability to attach to anything. That, that, but that's all I could say about it. That, that's the way I saw it their inability to attach that's what it appears to be okay. um and their ability to what again aphantasia kind of connects to compartmentalization you're every time you go in a compartment with a certain person you're all good but once you walk out of that compartment an arc does locks the door goes in the next compartment doesn't even think about that compartment anymore is not worried about that compartment this would explain why they're not worried about getting 
caught because they don't think that. And I also see this. It doesn't seem like that narcs think 10 minutes ahead. Well, of course, if they were to have amphitasia, that would make sense. They don't think that far ahead. They don't think of consequences. They're not going to think that far ahead. They're going to be in the present moment. You know, they may be sad that you've broken up, but they can get over it because your face, your memory, the things that you did together, the things that make us go, <laughs> you know, you can just cry for days. Okay. They don't have that because they don't have, they can't visualize the memory. They can't think back to a time that was amazing and just cry about it. I mean, I, I, you know, my father passed away a year ago, tomorrow actually. And I mean, I can sit and just in a split second start crying just by visualizing things. They can't do that. They can't do it. I, I think that there's something here. I think that there, I'm not sure what the connection is. I'm not sure, you know, because obviously not everybody who has aphantasia is a narcissist, as far as I know. Maybe, because if I'm going to get a lot of flack for that, people are going to be like, I mean, I have aphantasia, I'm not an arc. I, I get that. But then there are those types of people. Maybe aphantasia is, is the reason why they are, but they choose to... To not give a fuck. The person who has aphantasia is more like concerned that they don't care about certain things. That does bother them. It does. And they, are, they acknowledge it. A narc does not acknowledge it. This is so new. This phenomena is so new that they haven't even, there's no word narcissism, nothing, it's not even in here. And perhaps it's something like, you know how we say um, every narc is a cheater, but not every cheater is a narc? Well, not everybody who has aphantasia is a narcissist, but every narcissist appears to have a bit of aph aphantasia. I guess people wouldn't associate it because the difference would be that a narc does things from an evil perspective. But there were, you know, those moments where my ex would say, you make me out to be way more complicated than I am. And everybody seems to say that. I hear it so many times. My narc said that too. I'm such a simple man. What if they didn't know? What if they have this neurological problem where memories just don't exist? Visualizations of, of you when they walk away, just don't exist. In the moment, they're all about that. You can be hanging out with a narc and having the best damn time, and, and then they can turn around and just go off with somebody else in the moment. This is why a narcissist will read, and I call it historical rejection, and I have a, a, some articles about it. I should probably do a video about it. Historical rejection is where they just reject your history together. It blows your mind. How can you just, it just, it doesn't make any sense. How can you be with somebody for so many years and it really not matter? They just reject your history. Well, that would make sense because history exists in your mind. Can we associate it with narcissism? Let me know what you think in the comments. I would be very, I, I want to know your opinion. Maybe I'm going to be the first one to um, bring it to the forefront. I may get a lot of flack about it because I can't believe that it's not. I mean, we're talking about these are articles on uh, Web and WebMD, um, psychological magazines, and nobody has even occurred to them that, are we talking about narcissism? Is this like a form? Are they afraid to say it? I don't know. I'm not. Um, I'm not. So... Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it may give you a little food for thought when you're sitting there going, why would he do that? Why would she do that? Well, maybe there's some crazy reason. 
<laughs> the mind's on. Maybe when they said, I, you know, I remember my ex used to say to me, sometimes, you know, when I'm not with you, it's not like I'm, I'm, I'm with anybody else sometimes. I'm just not with you. Like, you know, and I just would be blown away by that. But, and then he would blow me off for weeks until I'd show up at his door. Then he'd be like, oh, you know, <laughs> like, I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure you visit my blog, TheNarcissisticPersonality.com. I do have my new book, uh, which is called Vacancy in the Rabbit Hole. Make sure you read it. And I will, I'll be back very soon to talk about this again. So you have yourself a wonderful rest of the week. And I will see you next time.